Good evening, everyone. Happy McAllen Monday, and welcome to another episode of McAllen Conversations with me, Cameron Miller. Now, tonight I am joined by a guest who brings a new expertise to uh, these wonderful series of conversations, and Andre Herbert, who it was, has started a, I guess, a movement called Love Music, Love Wine, and he pairs uh, musical albums and, and um, different bottles of wine together to create a really harmonious experience. And when he and I got talking about uh, the Macallan and whiskey, he, he really wanted to create a playlist that uh, would speak to drinking um, one of the greatest single malts in the world. And uh, I thought I had to have him on the show to talk about kind of his background, his experiences, and, and what he loves about pairing music with libations, whether it's wine or whiskey, um, and, and get a feeling for, for how we could do it at home. You know, I've got a very small uh, record collection here, and I'm actually looking at getting a good record player um, on my, uh, my wedding registry. So uh, any family members and friends watching, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, I would love a, uh, a good record player. Um, but uh, hopefully Andre can give me a bit of advice about enjoying my whiskey with some really good music. So he's going to join me momentarily. Hey. Hello, Andre. How are you doing? I'm doing well, my friend. How are you? Oh, it's fantastic to see you. You you brightened up my evening with something to uh, enjoy a weed jam of the McAllen with. Yes, definitely, definitely. You got mine here on the side. Mm. Uh, Happy McAllen Monday, as I yes, say. Exactly, exactly. I'm I'm totally down with that. So, how you, <laughs> how was your week? Uh, I mean, the week just started, but how was your weekend? That kind of thing. Uh, the, there's no end to this, Andre. It feels yeah. like every day is a bit of the same thing. Uh, both of us living in Toronto, the, uh, the lockdown continues. Yes. Um, my weekend was nice, though. I got out, and I got to, uh, to run around the park a little bit. And yeah. I kicked the soccer ball around, and um, some of the topic today is I was picking a playlist to actually play footy with my friends, yeah. and you know, no one can settle on something, so I picked rock power ballads, and I hadn't listened to those in a long time, and yes. it was actually fantastic. You know, you yeah. could see a few people... You know, kind of singing along as they walked by, kind of Excellent. a guilty pleasure for some, I am sure. Exactly. How was your weekend? My weekend was good. Um, got out, uh, like, you know, just to get a, a little bit of a walking in. Uh, me and the better half, uh, we decided to to meet up with uh, a couple of friends. And we did some socially distancing stuff of that, walked around the distillery. And that's that, that was it. That was a pretty, pretty relaxing weekend. Just uh, working on a few other things like... Uh, trying to get my e-commerce store up and running. So that has been keeping me busy on the weekends when I have a little bit of time. So that's it. So and, yeah. and the e-commerce would be, would that be your hat you're wearing yeah, right now? Yeah. So for my merch, stuff like that. So I am, um, so Love Music, Love Wine is my brand. Um, and basically what I do is I pair music with wine. Instead of music, uh, wine and food, I pair it with wine because it's all about feelings and experiences and that type of thing. So um, I do have a, a line of merch. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details, but um, it's going to be coming to the website uh, very soon. It's uh, lovemusiclovewine.com is the site, stuff like that. And uh, you can look at my profile. It has all the information in there. And, um, you know, as we move forward, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Awesome. I'm just going to put that in the chat right now. And in the meantime, Andre, I, I know you've started this this movement, as I called it, um, and it's really a brand now, but who are you and, and what gives you this, uh, you know, authority to, to pair music and wine? What's your background? So uh, my, my background is like, I, I mean, I, I've worked in sort of the music rights industry for the last uh, probably about five years or so. But mm -hmm. uh, even before that, I, I used to be a promoter back in the city uh, quite a long time ago. So I've always been involved with music. And music has been part of my life as a kid. Growing up, uh, I remember listening to my dad's records and uh, listening to music. My dad my dad was a big jazz fan, that type of thing. Had a, a massive collection. And, and it was like, it was, it was nice to sit back and sort of, 
sort of get an understanding of music from him. And then I just went on to always love music. Um, music has been part of my life. I, it's, it's, it's a real sort of an emotional journey for me because I, I tend to, you know, depending on how I'm feeling, whether I'm happy, sad, or in contemplation mode or whatever you want to call it, I associate that feeling to a song. And it can mm-hmm. be a random song. There's no rhyme or reason for me wanting to. I'm thinking about that song while I'm getting feeling this either this euphoria or this sadness or whatever I'm feeling. I always sort of bring it back to a song. The the wine thing, um, probably I would say I've always liked. Probably about 15, 16 years ago, I started liking wine a little bit more. But then I didn't have any kind of real sort of experience about it. I just knew uh, I've tried it. It wasn't bad. I wasn't spitting it out and I wasn't uh, getting all whatever. And it was like, okay, this is, this is, this is fun. And then about um, 10 years ago, um, I went to uh, a private wine club um, called Vintage Conservatory with, um, with a, a friend of mine who was a member there. And um, when I walked in, I was like, I was blown away. Like right there and then I said, okay, who's in charge here? At the time it was, uh, it was Andrew, uh, Andrew Smith, which I know mm-hmm. you had a conversation with him on here. Uh, I did, yeah, it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. So for that, and we talked about, but it, and we said, okay, you know what? I need to become a member here. I need to, I need to get into this, this wine culture. And from there on, I started that journey of wanting to know more about wine because there's just one thing about me. I'm all, I'm a, I'm on a constant um, thirst for wanting to learn about things. This is mm-hmm. one of the, this, I, secretly, this is one of the reasons that I really wanted to be on here tonight because I'm hoping that you will open my eyes, open my mind and teach me about scotch and whiskeys and that type of thing. So, but anyways, so when, once I, I started talking to, to Andrew about joining, I, I finally ended up joining for that. And then the journey started like, I wanted to know more about various types of wines, learn about various varietals and that type of thing. And um, uh, it just about uh, in two th- uh, 2018, um, it, I was sitting back one day listening to a song and I got thirsty. And I said, you know what? <laughs> Instead of drinking water or trying to find like a mixed drink or something like that, why don't I open up a bottle of wine? I opened a bottle of wine. I remember it was a cab sub, and I was listening to some, uh, I think it was like R&B, soul, that type of thing. And it was like, all right, this is, this is, a, and that's exactly how the journey started with sort of uh, pairing music and wine. It just went on from there. Like I started uh, trying different wines, listening to different music, sort of putting it together. And then I decided to, you know what? I need to put out a playlist. I want people to experience the type of feelings I'm getting when I'm drinking a certain varietal or a certain wine or and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's basically how it started. And then we, we went, we ended up, we ended up doing a couple of um, uh, in person, because that's what you have to say these days, based on the fact that we're in a lockdown <laughs> and a pandemic. We did a, we did a couple of um, sort of live music and wine pairings. So we did a couple at the wine club, uh, vintage conservatory, and then one at Bay Blower radio. Because I have a, a, a relationship with uh, the Babe Lore guys. They would bring in a beautiful, mm-hmm. amazing system. People would bring either a record or they'll bring a song and then we'll, we'll stream it. And then they'll tell us about why is it that they're, they're, they wanted to listen to this particular song and why they want to drink this wine that they're, uh, they're pairing it with. So it was interesting to see. A, and and it, once again, like, truth be told, it was my way of understanding what people are drinking and why they're drinking it and then what they're listening to while they're drinking that. And this mm-hmm. helps me to sort of build up my, I don't know if you want to call it repertoire, my, my taste, my thirst, my, my listening skills, that type of thing. And opening my mind to all types of music and all various types of wines. So that's basically how the journey started, my friend. That's amazing. I, I love how it's rooted in just a, 
a thirst for knowledge and, you know, pardon the pun there, but yes. it really is taking something that you you know really well, um, but still uh, want to learn more about, which would be music. Yes. And you discover a new passion, which would be wine and yes. you bring it together and, and the journey continues. It's not yes. a culmination of, oh, this is it. It's yes. now the journey truly begins. And that's something yes. that's magical. And it's, it's never done. <laughs> the yes. work is never that's, done. Yes. Right? Never done. Cause it's like I said, like, I, I never want to be pigeonholed into, oh, I like this variety or I like this whiskey or I like, no, no. I want to be able to try everything. I don't want, like, people say, you know, your, pal you, your, your palate mature or your ear, your listening is maturing and it's, you got to a certain point and then you, that's it. No, no, no. My thirst, there's, there's my thirst for knowledge and wanting to find out more needs to continue. At least until I've mm -hmm. gone past this earth, or whatever, if that's a thing. But yeah, I want it to always continue. I always want to be learning, and that's that's my thing. And and I, I draw a lot of similarities with that, Andre, with, with myself and mm -hmm. um, my knowledge and 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 sort of maybe thirst for it um, with whiskey. And it really came from uh, opportunity. It was a passion. I like uh, learning about the stories, the histories, and and all these little things that came with just this bottle of whiskey. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, my grandfather used to drink this and he, he used to give it to me when um, we'd visit him for whatever reason. And there's always something tied to the people and the place. And so when I was given the opportunity to work in the industry, even on just a local level, my, my thirst for knowledge quickly grew my role. And all of a sudden I was seeking out new opportunities and new opportunities. And that's what progressed me to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but it just leaves me wanting to ask more questions and discover new things. Yes. And, yes. and then you get to the point now where I think we're both at, where you want to have these opportunities to educate mm -hmm. and only to educate to the point of let's open the door for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Let them pick the music and pick the wine pick the whiskey and pick the food, right? Let them find a way that they can enjoy it even better. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. I think gives us a great opportunity to enjoy life in a whole new way yes, from sure. either someone else's perspective it or like I, like I did with your playlist was, oh, I, I hadn't heard that version of the song. I, I, it may have been, um, was it Tom Petty? Uh, cover the Beatles? Was it? Um, You're talking about uh, when, my, when my guitar weeps? Is that the one? Yes, about exactly. Chris? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've never heard Tom Petty's cover. I've heard that song a million times. Mm -hmm. And and yet hearing it, that was almost like hearing it for the first time again. And that was really magical. And that came from you. That was a gift from you to me. Yes. And and that was kind of a beautiful side of it. And that's what I like to do with these whiskeys. Mm -hmm. Because especially with Macau and speaking mm -hmm. to you how 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 difficult it is to make when we're not just talking about ingredients, it's time. Mm -hmm. you're, you're waiting for a lot of these things. Yes. And, and then you get to share uh, that special moment. And that's what music for me is. And, and you and I spoke about that when we yes. first got talking was yes. music is all about a moment. Yes. Right. In that moment, what do you want to hear and what you're mm -hmm. hearing? What's it making you feel? Because you can hear it again tomorrow and, and yes. feel something. Completely. Exactly. Exactly. So it's in that, it's in that moment. It's what, and, and I always, I always stress that. Because I've gotten a lot of folks when I put out uh, appearing posts and they'll come back and they'll say, hey, uh, Andre, you know what? The wine that you pair is okay, but I tried that song with this specific wine and I loved it. And to me is, that is the kind of knowledge I want to know. Yeah, fair enough. If, you, if, if, I, you, if I put out a pairing with a specific uh, album with a specific wine and you like it, great. I love it. I love that. But if you come back and you say, you know what, that wine that you put out, I love the wine. I didn't like the song, but I like this song or I like this album. To me, that is gold. That is like gold right there because you're telling me that, hey, at this particular moment, the song that you pick, it wasn't something that I was vibing at that time, but I was vibing to the wine and I was vibing to this song. And this, this to me is exactly why I, 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 love, I love doing this. I love, I, love, I love talking to people about music. I love talking to people about wine. I love trying different wines. I love trying different music. So I, I totally get where you're going there, my friend. Totally. Well, I want to raise a glass to that. I'll raise Definitely. a glass to a, a, a different point of view communicated in an easy 
an understandable way that someone agrees with or disagrees mm. with, but then makes another valid point, right? Exactly. It's not about being angry that someone else sees it a different way. It's enlightening, and no, it should be. Talking. And that, that's, that's, that's my point, my whole point there. By the way, this, this 12 is fantastic. I love it. It, it, it brings back, I'll, I'll give you a quick little story. Um, I love scotch. Uh, I kind of lost my way slightly, probably about um, a few years ago, because mm -hmm. I, was, I was actually trying to drink scotch in the same manner as you would drink wine. <laughs> Bad dangerous idea, game friend. bad <laughs> idea my friend it, it was not good so like so you know when we start talking and, and quite before i was like you know what I, I i scotch is something that has been i always have good bottles in my cabinet it's one of the things mm -hmm. that uh i i always make sure i have but I, I i love it when i'm just i'm sitting back and i can pour myself a nice glass and just sit and sip and just enjoy all the flavors. And of course, I want to be listening to something in the background while that's going on, that kind of thing. But and the warm feeling that I get from it, the nutty flavor, the caramel, all these, all these, are these, these types of things that I get from not just the nose, but also on the palate. And it, you know, like having a shot with you and sitting back and talking with you. This is what I love. The mm -hmm. other days or the prior things when I was uh, trying to drink it, it's like, okay, we're doing a scotch tasting and we got about seven or eight balls and we're trying to finish seven or eight balls and it's five or six of us. I'm sorry that, 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 that got a little bit out of hand. So I'm glad you're helping me to get back into this mode of enjoying good, fine scotch, not just trying to like out drink it. So thank you. And thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome, Audrey. Thank you for joining me and, and, and enlightening me with the ways that people can, can discover uh, something they may know very well in a new light. And, yes. and I like that you've had that kind of journey of rediscovering it. Uh, but that's the thing I always try and encourage people, especially with Scotch whiskey. It's less is more, right? Mm -hmm. When Last time I was at the Vintage Conservatory, uh, I was doing a tasting and I, I walked through a beautiful array of Macallans. And the most amazing thing is that there is a very, very beautiful bottle, McAllen M, number six. We're talking some very uh, stunning whiskey. And the immediate um, aftermath was the, the, the guest wanted to share their whiskey with me. Yes. And that's amazing. That's what yes. you asked for. And they, they wanted me to come out of the presentation room and sit down with them. And mm -hmm. I had to pick my battle. I said, I mm -hmm. can't have all of these. <laughs> Let, pick, pick one that yeah. you have the best story of. Yes. Because there was some 30-year-old, 40-year-old whiskeys. I'm like, that's beautiful. I appreciate that. But is there a whiskey here that you have a story for that means more to you? And, of course, they did. And that's yes. the bottle I wanted to try. Exactly. It, it wasn't even a good one. It wasn't a very good whiskey, actually. We had to laugh because we both didn't like it. Yes. But it was so unique to that moment. That's the experience I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate you mentioning that you liked the caramel notes, the nuttiness and the fruitiness, and Macallan. And I, I always like to help explain where those, those flavors come from. But even they're sitting and enjoying them on yourself and picking them through, they're not going to sting. They're going to sting when you're sitting and enjoying someone with a view or with the music. And mm -hmm. that's what I've missed during all of this, despite you know being home with my fiance and my dog and, and, and all you know, the things I love about my home when I'm typically traveling, I've lost that sensation of, of people around me and, and music. Because yes. you think of a bar, you go to a bar, the bartender might make a suggestion, yeah, I'll try that. And it's usually all that paired together, the ambiance, the lighting, the smell, the taste of the room, exactly. and then the music. And it, that makes that taste better. And I cannot wait to get back into Toronto's bars and experience that again. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I, yes. I, I mean, you know, shout out to all the bartenders and bar owners and stuff like that. I know they've been struggling obviously with um, the kind of things that we're going through right now, but we will get there. We just have to hang in together. It's a little bit longer, but we will get back to that whole experiencing the, the vibes and the, the sounds and the, the taste and stuff like that. We'll get back there. I can't wait myself. And, and, and that's something to look forward to, right? You, you mentioned your event at, at uh, Bay and Bloor and, 
I would absolutely love to do an event like that with you. So I, I, I hope from, from beyond this, we can keep talking and, and look for an opportunity to do maybe the, the McAllen and uh, music again in, in person. I know that's definitely, wild. Definitely. Down the <laughs> I know, road, I, that would be something truly special. Yeah, and, and one of the things is, is like, I know that I continue to make sure that I maintain my relationships with um, the guys from the Bay Blow Radio. If, uh, if any of them are on, Richard or Neil or whatever you guys on, hello to those guys there, so for that. And we want to, when we get past this and we get back into that, that setting of some kind of a normalcy, we want to do some more funky things like that. And uh, definitely a tasting of McAllen and some um, good music uh, for that night, that would be perfect. Uh, listening to it on one of their fantastic systems, my friend, it makes a fantastic difference. You know what I mean? Like oh, this is sure, a, sure. a good, a good, um, a good speakers, good turntable, um, a good amp, everything just sort of um, coinciding and mixing together and you got that going. So the beautiful sound, it's not even about loudness. People say to me, okay, well, you know, I'm listening to something and it's not loud enough. No, 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 no. It's like getting the full range. You're starting with the bass, you're starting with the mids, then you start with the highs and you're getting into the, like the tweeter part type thing and co commingling all together. That's what creates that, that amazing vibe that we all get from any type of song that you like, that type of thing, you know what I mean? Doesn't matter what genre or what theme or whatever, it's like you get that when you get the full range of the song, that type of thing. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. And, and to get into that, I don't think it's the nitty gritty. I, I think it's more of the nuance of enjoying mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. um, you, you gotta appreciate these people who master music. They're not even the ones who, who make it, but they're gonna master it to make sure that it all comes into the right cohesion. And then you're gonna impart it to the listener in the best possible way with yeah. that right medium. And if it's the technology and, and, and oh, the, yeah. the design it's, behind it's, it, that's so important. Exactly, combination of all those things coming together that will give you that uh, ear candy, that, uh, that beautiful, lot sweet sound, sweet spot that you get when you're enjoying one of your favorite songs uh, throughout the whole time. And then, you know, happening to, to opening up a, a good bottle of uh, whiskey, loving the Macal and stuff like that. And this is one of the, one of the, one of the things when I was thinking about um, the playlists for um, this particular, uh, sing, you know, the single malt movement, as I call it, type of thing, you know what? And you, you talk about discovering McAllen through music. I, I chose an array of songs. So we started with sort of that bluesy, rocky kind of um, vibe. You know, you're getting some Jimmy in there. You got some, mm -hmm. like you said, some Tom Petty. You got, it's, it's an array of things. You got John Mayer and, and uh, you know, like uh, you're talking like, um, what's his name? Um, with Sarah Smiles from uh, Hall of Notes. That time I'm throwing yes. some of that in there. Even going back to some real soul, so I'm getting a little bit of Marvin Gaye, we, we, we dropped in there. We also dropped a little bit of Otis Redding to take you even further oh, yeah. back, right? And that, that to me is, is when you put all that together and put you in the right state of mind, that's an awesome bottle of Macallan. That's how I I love it. that. I love that. You're gonna replace me, Andre, for, for the job soon. I'm a, I should be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna let you take care. I'm, I'm just gonna enjoy on the side, and you just you just keep educating me. That's all I. That's all I ask. Just educate me, my friend. Well, I think you did an amazing job there of capturing all the elements of of the Macallan and and any good Scotch whiskey. For for me, whether you're thinking about the vessel in which it's delivered in, so the tweeters, the music, the you know the the speakers that give it that warmth, that that ear candy, as you called it. You want the delivery to be as good as you expect it to be. And, and that's what McAllen tries to achieve with our, our whiskey mastery team. They're going to the, the ends of the earth to try and ensure that every time you open a bottle, you get what you expect. It should taste the right way. Now, the outside elements of the music, the bar, the ambiance, that's really up to you. And mm -hmm. I always say if you're enjoying the McAllen, you should hopefully have two things. One would be good company. And if you can't have good company, which is sometimes the case, like right now, 
um, we're, we're, we're separated by, by a virtual um, uh, camera, it, yes. it'll be a good view. Yes. Right? And right now, the good view is me looking at you. Sometimes it's looking out over the city. It really depends on, on, on what you need. But it's an opportunity to just um, wash yourself in the experience. That's what you really want. And at the heart of that experience, I love that you call back to you know, the Otis Reddings and then up to the, the John Mayers, even though like, John Mayers has been around for quite a while now, but you, you see a distance in, in generations. And that's what whiskey is. Whiskey's time trapped. Whether you're looking back to 1824 when McCown first made whiskey to today where we have a brand new distillery and we haven't tasted the liquid that's come off those stills yet. We're, we're, okay. we're many years away until that actually comes to fruition yeah. for us. We're still always pulling from our stocks and mm -hmm. crafting whiskey today from something that was, was you know, thought about and crafted decades ago. This is, you know, 12 years. Yeah. 12 years. Think about how much the world's changed in 12 years. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to think about. And, and so what we always rely on, like yeah, any, any good news, there it is. Yes. I think it's it's having the right bone, right? Yes. Having a good beat or a rhythm, and then you can layer and build up from there. Uh, and for McAllen, that's our, our cast. That's what we mm -hmm. age the spirit in. And for us, it, it's 100% sherry cast. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for yourself, someone who likes those fruity notes, those nutty notes, those caramels, that's where you're getting them. These beautiful American and European sherry seasoned oak cast that mm -hmm. don't happen... Um, I think overnight, these, these casts can take three years to make. So whether you uh, compare that to a master crafted instrument on which to record with, or whether it's someone's, you know, first album versus their penultimate album, right? Like how much have they grown to get there? And, and always we're trying to find the peak moment of whiskey to capture it. And, and, okay. and that moment is hopefully shared with people who enjoy it like you and me. Yes, that 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 I, I love the way you put that. But I, I I have a I have a question to ask you about uh, Macallan. Um, you know, like I, I have the Macallan Gold. Yes. Um, I have a Macallan. Well, I got the I have the Macallan Twelves for that. And there was some talk, which I don't I don't know much about. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to educate me about that. Macallan went into a, a direction of sort of uh, with their labeling versus aging. Can you give me any sort of mm -hmm. little background on that? What was, what was that about? Of course. So what you're referring to is McAllen's um, innovation and growth of our, our range with what are known as non-age stated whiskeys. You actually see two of them on my shoulder here. Below in the red box, something called the McAllen mm -hmm. Classic Cut, and above that, edition number six. Both of these whiskeys are, are, have no age on the label. So for, for, for you as a, uh, a connoisseur, you don't know how old it is. By law, in Scotland, every cask aged at least three years and one day can legally be called whiskey. So by definition, you can assume that's at least three years old. Legally, there's nothing further we can say. And that's actually a restriction by the SWA or the Scotch Whiskey Association. And that's to prevent people from saying, well, there's some 30-year-old whiskey in there. We're not going to tell you how much, but there is some 30-year-old in there. And that's, that's almost like a lot. Because mm -hmm. what if it's, a, you know, a thimble versus the rest of it that's a different mm -hmm. age? So mm -hmm. some people ask, well, why did McAllen do that? Well, McAllen did it for two reasons. One We've always made our whiskeys with age statements, you know, dating back to the original sort of um, vintages. And it, it's always been McAllen 12, 18, 25, 30. Then we expanded into a new range using different types of casks called mm -hmm. Fine Oak, 10, 12, 15, 17, 21, all again with ages. And it limited in terms of what else, what other story could you tell? You can draw a parallel to music. If someone didn't innovate by mixing types of music or taking one element and then evolving that one element further, we would never have an extra or a new genre of music. So for the McAllen, they decided to come out with an entirely new range of whiskeys without any age tape. Mm -hmm. So then how does someone navigate it? How do they chew? Yeah. Well, at our heart, we always say we're a naturally colored whiskey. So what would go into our casks, our, our wood vessels, colorless, would come out 
at varying colors. Sometimes it's yellow. Sometimes it's amber. Sometimes it's orangey or sienna. Or sometimes it's, it's rich amber, mahogany, or, or ruby. And so that's where they got these names is from these naturally occurring colors in the whiskeys. And typically, the darker the color, the more intense the flavor or the more decadent it is. And, of course, we could control that based on which cast we chose. So really, it just gave us a whole new avenue to create great whiskey for our, our, our fans um, and told a different story. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so now what we've done is we've continued both. We continue making age-stated whiskeys. We continue making non-age-stated whiskeys. And that's everyone else in the industry as well now. So yeah. we were one of the first to, to, to risky and, and go ahead and do that. And, and uh, if you've had a chance of trying some of those, whether it's gold, amber, stain, or ruby, you get yeah. to discover what our whiskey makers truly set out to do. Yeah. Make no, it, it, was, it was fantastic. I, I, I just remember talking to a few non-experts that would say that, oh, McAllen is moving away from um, these eight, like the, the aging on their balls and stuff like that. And it was like, mm -hmm. okay, is this something that we wanted to try? But when we did, it was fantastic. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's still, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's amazing that I, I, I didn't, obviously, if you're going to different, like you said, the different colors, you get the different intensities and that type of thing, but it was still had that McAllen note on there. And that was what I appreciated. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't upset. <laughs> I was curious. I wasn't upset. Yeah. Well, I, I think you, you've been working in the music industry for a long time. I'm sure you've met a lot of artists who are very proud of their sound, proud of their art, because that's what they are. They are artists. And for someone to tell someone, well, you don't make you know, the music like you used to, it's kind of like telling them, oh, you, you don't make art the way you used to. And that's kind of cruel, where it's like, well, my art is evolving. My art is ever changing. And it's McAllen, you know, to try and tell a master whiskey maker, oh, you're just making whiskey, you know, to, to, to sell bottles. You're an accountant. Mm -hmm. You're not a whiskey maker. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you would not say that to them in the face. I, yeah, I don't no, think no, you've met they're, they're, they're passionate who are not going to voice their opinion. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you should taste the McAllen because as a single malt, what single malt means is single producing house, and that's the McAllen. It is never made anywhere other than the McAllen estate in, in, in East Raoki, in Kregalaki, Scotland. Nothing's changed there. We, we still grow the barley there. We still pull our water there, and we still use the same tasks. Right. And that's the big part of what McCallan's always been is we were proud of our name. We're proud of our logo. And to earn that, it has to be of a certain quality. We would never settle. And that's, I think, something I'm always proud to say as the ambassador. Uh, that's that that to me is exactly my whole point behind even trying to bring this up. Like you said, like we wanted to I wanted to understand where they were going with this and you know, to make sure that I'm reinforcing people that the quality, the process, and all the elements that went in to make McAllen what it is, is there. So there's no need to worry. Just enjoy, get some music, get some McAllen. <laughs> I'm, I'm also tonight, I am trying, uh, I'm doing a little Swiss classic almond chocolate along with this. Ooh, yeah. So, so I don't know if the camera will see this stuff for that, but this is basically what I'm, um, I'm doing with it. So it's like almonds, uh, classic Swiss chocolate, and uh, my Macallan got the playlist on for that. Right now I'm listening to Tin Pan Alley by, um, what's his name? Um, oh my God, I forgot his name. How can I do that? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh um, yeah. And anyone that Stevie. knows that song, they know that that is a classic song and we should definitely get out. The playlist, once again, is out there on Spotify. It's on. It's going to be in my um, my uh, profile so for that, so you'll definitely be able to go and get it. I will definitely add that uh, again to my story after this, so everyone can go back after listening to it and, and, and give it a listen to. Because that's going to be on my my repeat, I think, all week. As yes. there's always a different mood to it, which is nice. Yes. But uh, before I go any further, there was a great question in the chat from uh, Nola Wine Chill. Um, and they were just asking you the barrel age. So just for clarity, barrels are actually sizes of casks. Casks are just wood vessels you carry or, or, or store something in. And they come in varying sizes. Barrels are most commonly used because in America, barrels are used to age bourbon in. 
and they actually make up the majority of, of casks used globally. So if you think of most whiskeys, they're aged in X bourbon barrels and then usually aged in something else. It's a really common practice in the industry. Uh, but for us at McAllen, when we have used X bourbon barrels, we always note it on our label and it's usually a wholly different range. And that was the fine oak or triple cask range as we call it now. But our core, so sherry oak and double cask, only use sherry seasoned oak casks. And they're actually quite large. They're about 500 liters versus a barrel, which is about 250 liters, or 200 liters, I should say, sorry. Um, and that just changes all different aspects, right? Whether it's more woody forward, more, um, more spirit forward, um, more dry, more robust, all these elements come into play. And, and I'm sure we could get into an hour long discussion with, with variations there. And, and the same can be said for music, right? You know, yes. you can play the same instrument, same instrument so many different ways and get a such different sound from it. And that's the beauty of it. It's the possibility. Awesome. Awesome. Actually, th just a, another little comment about Nola. This lady posts some amazing foods on here with wine that I, I'm, I, I swear, like every time I, her post comes up in my feed, I'm like blown away with the type of uh, foods that she's putting up there. So shout out to Nola. Amazing. Thank you for keeping me thinking when I'm, when I'm also in the kitchen trying to whip something up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'll have to check it out and see what I have because I could, uh, I could always use a bit of inspiration uh, with some cooking at home. Um, and then the sure. other question uh, that came in was from our friends at the Vintage Conservatory um, asking you what your favorite soccer team was. If you have oh, a favorite uh, soccer team. And, and this is coming, I know who this is coming from. This is coming from Costa. Just so oh, clear. yeah. <laughs> so Costa, you know what my favorite team is. It's Arsenal for life. Gunners for life. You know that. Yes. You're a gooner. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we're, seeing, we're seeing a little bit of ups and downs right now, but we will come back. But I'm going to throw this back to him. Which team had the undefeated record one season? Exactly. The Invincibles. You know the Invincibles. Oh, yeah. Hey, here's the Henri. That name is magic. Yes, yes. Oh, brilliant. And I love that these are the different passions that cross set, whether it's mm -hmm. music, food, sport, or spirits. There's always an element of... Uh, personal perspective, personal connection, and then, of course, banter or, or, or back and forth. And mm -hmm. with, with whiskey, it, it's so present where people are so opinionated on what they like and don't like. And I encourage people to find out what they do enjoy. But always remember, it's not a uh, an end-all and be-all. It's not, you know, oh, this is not good. I don't like it ever will. It's something perhaps you don't like. Someone else might. And exactly. the beauty of it is a celebration that, of the entire category. Perfect. You've just, you've just said it perfectly. Yes, you know, you put, you put things out. You put pairings out, stuff like that. that. That person may not like your complete pour. They may not like it at all. But you give them the right to have that, that, that uh, opinion. And I love hearing what they're doing, what they're doing next. Because guess what? I'm picking that up and I'm going to possibly change that for another pairing that I'm doing because I want to see what I'm going to see if I can recreate what feeling they got from their pairing. And that, that to me is sort of how I go about doing this. It's all about feeling mood and just putting those two together, feeling mood and taste. And that's it. And that's, that's how we get these beautiful pairings that come on on a week to week basis for that. I, 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 and, and I, go ahead. I was going to say, if you, if you do close yourself off to something, you're just yeah. going to miss out on all the things that offers, right? If you listen to one type of music and never another, you'll never find out what your mood may be when you do listen to it. Now, yeah. I'm sure there are music that I'm not a huge fan of, but let me tell you, when I'm out driving in the country, guess what ends up on the radio? Usually country music. Uh, you know, that was, that's a great segue uh, into a quick thing I want to mention. We do this thing called virtu the Virtual Listening Lounge on Friday nights. And we get together with um, some friends and we get over Zoom and we share screen and music and we talk about various songs and that type of thing. And last week's theme was country music. And oh, beautiful. Yeah, 
when it was when it was first raised, it was like, oh well, you know, we don't whatever. But then, it says no, no, let's have an open mind, and trust me, it was a fantastic night. Beautiful music for that. I started I started off drinking. Uh, what was I drinking? I was drinking. Um, uh, I think it was a, a Mencia, the Mencia grape, uh, a wine coming out of Spain. Mm -hmm. And halfway through that, I go, no, 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 no. That's it. I, I, I don't want to drink this wine anymore. Went straight to the Macallan. Ooh. To, to complete, to complete that, that night of, uh, of listening to some awesome music, that type of thing. I opened my mind. I heard what other people are listening to. They heard my picks, and it was it was a beautiful night. It was a beautiful night. I love that. I love that. It's such a great way of you know, enlightening one another, right? Yes. It could be a song you've heard a hundred times. I said that earlier, and suddenly someone goes, "Hey, this song." Oh, I haven't heard Jamiroquai in decades, and you put on Jamiroquai, and all of a sudden, right? Yeah. There's there's this beautiful re re either memory that you had from that or you have a new love for it. And I find too often my maybe aggregator or my suggested music on Spotify just spits out the same things in me again and again and again. And I've almost mm -hmm. kind of lost interest in that. And I want to expand myself and, and, and find these new things. So um, I'm very interested in, in participating in one of these lounges. Definitely. One of these Fridays, definitely join us. It's called the Virtual Listening Lounge. And we, like I said, we choose a team at the beginning of the week and uh, we just have a good time with it. You know, this week we're going That's to Africa. That's where we're going. Africa, oh, very Africa cool. This week. So uh, definitely looking forward to that. It's going to be a good night. I was, I was having a conversation with someone who was saying Action Bronson, who, you know, whatever figure he may be in, in people's minds, but he was using Nigerian rock in some of his beats. Alec, Nigerian rock? I had no idea that was even a genre. And then you know, it opens up the opportunity for you to discover Nigerian rock. And I was like, that's a really cool way of discovering music. It's just kind of yeah. hidden right in plain sight. And I think that's yeah. a lot of music. Exactly. You know, like it just, all, all we have to do is just give it a chance. Just open your mind to trying something new um, and listening to something new, that type of thing. And you will, you'll be surprised. You'll be very surprised with uh, what you discover. And that's what we always want to do is discover something new and, and don't be afraid for new opportunities to, to experience them. So uh, w with us sort of rounding down the, the evening here, Andre, is there anything that you'd want to share with, with someone who, who wants to get into pairing music with their whiskey or their wine? What, what tips and tricks can you give? Um, no tips and tricks. What I'm going to tell you is just try. Open your mind. Put on some music. Um, and go to your, 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 wherever you store your, your liquor, your wine, whatever, and say, you know what, I want to try this bottle and open the bottle, let the bottle breathe. If it's a, a beautiful wine that you want to give us, so you can get all the aromatics and stuff like that coming out of it and listen, the, the whole idea of listening, like we, I think one of the things that I find is I think we've lost the the art of listening right mm -hmm. where we sit back and we take everything else out of our minds and just listen and mixing that with your favorite wine or your favorite spirit uh you know a, a nice whiskey a nice a nice wine but that just take that time to do that even if you do for like 20 minutes tops a couple of songs a shot of a beautiful mccallan single gauge, you know, like single malt, join the single malt movement if you're uh, out there, that type of thing, and just listen to it. And what I would suggest is, if you're starting off with Macallan, great start, listen to the playlist, try it, and let us know what you think. So it's not magic, there's no, there's no thing, just, just try, you just have to be willing to try, that's it. I, I think like any good whiskey, you should appreciate the color, the aroma, and the flavor. And that's yeah. almost like you're listening to the whiskey. You're giving it the time and the patience to tell you its own story. And I think everyone should do the same with their own whiskeys, with their own pour of Macallan, and with their music. I think yes. that's the best way to enjoy it. So, Andre, if people want to follow along more of uh, Love Music, Love Wine, 
where can they get a hold of you? So they can get a hold of me right here on Instagram uh, at Love Music Love Wine. Uh, um, they can go about it, the website Love Music Love Wine dot com um, on Facebook Love Music Love Wine. Um, it's very simple. I keep it, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, on is on um, on Twitter. Um, we change it up a bit. We just call it Love Music Wine 18. That's it. Love Music so, Wine 18 on, yeah, on, Twitter. Wine 18 on Twitter. Yeah, but and the then on Spotify, are... on Spotify, you, you have that playlist there. Is there something they can follow? Is it Love Music, Love Wine on Spotify as well? Basically, they just got to follow me. That's, that's just my name. I've been keeping it simple. Like it's because uh, I'm putting out all various types of uh, playlists based on moods and stuff that I'm doing. So just look for Andre Herbert and um, you can, you'll find it there or look for uh, Love Music, Love Wine, um, volume one, two, three, I think is out there. So, you know, and so there's going to be, and there's going to be a lot more info that's going to be going up on the site. So just keep following, keep on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we're all there and they'll be able to find oh. it. Not a problem. Well, well, I appreciate you spending the evening with me sharing a dram of yes. McAllen yes. and reminding me about listening and reminding me to not be afraid to discover something new. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for uh, making this happen. I appreciate this. Thank you. Anytime. Well, thank you, Andre, again. Have a wonderful evening. And thank you. to Nolan Hill for joining in. She was very active. Thank you. Everyone else, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Bonjour. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.